Hello, how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to take a look at this 2015 Hyundai Elantra. This Elantra, all the alert indications in the dash are illuminated. So we need to figure out why these are on. So the first thing I want to do is get a scan tool and scan the bus data. So let's go ahead and get the scan tool connected. As you can see, all the alert lamps are on, the tack doesn't work, basically the dash is dead with a lot of alert lamps on. So what I've gone and done is I've gone ahead and I've scanned the data and we ran a general scan so it would find all the modules that were on the bus. Now basically is what we've got is we've just got some of the modules but all the high speed stuff is in here like the engine control, the tranny control, the ABS, I don't see any of those present in my list. So that's telling me that I have some kind of a communication problem with this vehicle. So what I want to do is I want to put a breakout box on the diagnostic link connector and I want to look at the data. So we want to see what pulses are on the wires. Do I even have communications? So let's go ahead and get the breakout box on this vehicle. Now we've got the bob installed. Okay, so I've pulled up a wiring diagram for this Hyundai so I can understand the topology of how these bus systems are wired and how they interconnect with each other. Now right now, I'm going to tell you guys that when I'm working on a Hyundai or a Kia, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Many times the DLC wiring will not match the wiring diagrams from either Mitchell All Data or OE wiring diagrams. I've done quite a bit of these cars and I've always had some problems finding the wires. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do when they don't match. So the first thing I want to do is I want to look at pin 11. That is my yellow wire and the white wire is on pin 3. So that's indicating where the high speed bus is. Now what we need to do is take the breakout box and check pin 3 and 11 and let's see if that's the high speed system or not. We're going to go ahead and connect the scope ground lead to the battery ground so we have proper testing. So now is what we want to do is connect the oscilloscope. I'm going to connect channel 1 to pin 3, channel 2 to pin 11. I want to go ahead and I want to just check so we are making some kind of connection with the car. Um, the lights are off, so that definitely shows me we have a connection, uh, but we have no data. Now, my guess is, is from working on a lot of these cars and the comm buses, those wires aren't in the DLC, how the wiring di diagram is showing this. So what I want to do is I can see pin six, my lights on on my breakout box. Let's go ahead and move the channel one to pin six and channel two to pin 14 and those are the conventional pins but on many times these Hyundais those aren't the pins they use either so what I want to do is I want to shut these off and I want to come in and I want to zoom on this now this is my data packs these are really small data packs there's no real data in there but I do have some kind of a transmission um, so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and we want to get this again we want to get this and I want to unplug the scan tool to make sure it's not the thing communicating and it's not we still have communications and I have a 2.5 bias but notice how the packets I've got I've got a bunch of transmissions and a break and a, it, it's repetitious look how even it all is now that isn't the way this bus should be looking this has got a problem so we can't talk to the engine control module and there's just not enough data for this bus us to be working properly right now. So what I want to go ahead and do is I want to take two of the other leads and I want to go to the PCM or the ECM and I want to get into the twisted pair. Those are the CAN high lines. They'll be CAN high and CAN low as far as the signals go on them. But we're going to refer to those as just CAN high. So I want to go ahead and get into the CAN high lines so we can see what kind of data is on there or is there data. So let's go ahead and get into the ECM. I've removed the covers off of the ECM so I can have uh, access to the wiring. I found the communication wires here, but now what I found is that the twisted pair is white and pink, 
where the wiring diagram showed it was going to be white and yellow. Um, the pin locations are correct, so we're okay. So now let's go ahead and check the scope data to see what's on this bus. Okay, so we want to go ahead and get the scope set up. So what I want to use for this is I want to go to the dual scope. Now we want to go ahead, I want to shut these off and I want to shut these off. So we only have, this is the ECM and this is the DLC. Now by the wiring diagram, those are the same wire. Now the wire changed color, but the pin locations are the same. So what it looks like is I have two different buses. Do you see how much more data rate I have on this bus than this bus? Now if I add these back in, do you see how the yellow and red are happening at a different time than the green and blue? That looks like two different buses. But I don't think that's right. I think the wires are broken somewhere in this system. I think we're having a partial read on one side, and this is the main bus system in the yellow and blue. And that's at the ECM. So what we're going to need to do is to bridge the wires. What I want to do is I'm going to take some jumpers and connect from these two, and I'm going to run them up to the same ones there. So what I want to hook is yellow to green and red to blue, and then let's see if we can't get communications on this system. So let's go ahead and get those wires run. So what I've done is I've connected the yellow lead to green, the ch channel 3, and I've connected the red lead to blue, channel 4. Now we're going to go and plug the other ends into the breakout box. So I've gone ahead and I've connected the yellow jumper to channel 1 and the red jumper to channel 2 and now we can see that we have these overlaid. So this system, now we have full packets. Do you see that how before? And do you see how they're, they're both on the same line now? And that looks like the correct data to me. Look at how much more data is being uh, presented now. So now we'll zoom in on this and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now we've got, we've got good data here. These are the type of data packets that I expect. So now we have a lot of data being represented on the bus and both lines are the same data. The lines are broken on the system and I think bridging them has fixed it. But let's go ahead and test it. Let's check the dash to see if the lights stay illuminated or they go out and let's see if the scan tool will communicate. Okay, so I've gone ahead and we've rescanned the car, and now I have the engine, the tranny, uh, the stability control, and so forth. So now I have the modules that we didn't have, and I want to notice something else. Notice how there's no faults present in these? Um, just pretty funny, right? It's just, they're, they were online, but they just couldn't talk to the whole system. So the way that things are programmed doesn't always make sense to us, but you just got to realize that that whatever messages it needed, it was apparently getting because part of the bus is connected and part of it is disconnected. So here's my data. Again, we've got a bridge. Let's go ahead and start this guy up. And we can see all of our lights are out now and the dash is working. Notice the tack is functional. So basically, now the hard part, we got to find where the bus is broken and we always look for the breaks in the wiring and I'll spend about an hour trying to find where it's broken and if I can't find it I'm going to twist two pair in a vise. I'm going to put two wires in a vise and a drill and I'm going to drill them to where they're twisted and I'll bridge these wires with those out there but that's only a last resort guys. That's if it's somewhere way up in the dash and I can't find it I'll do that, but that isn't something to do. We want to find where the break is and take care of it. Um, so we know the wires are broken now for sure. So now I just need to start looking through the wire and getting some, some waveforms and we'll see what's going on. So I guess the first thing I need to do is look at the wiring diagrams to have a better understanding of how that engine control module is connected into the car system because obviously the engine and the ABS and the tranny control and all those controls they were all still talking so somehow where the wires came into the car maybe at the firewall or something they're broken um, so let's see what we can find okay so let's check the wiring diagram so this shows that I have the PCM and we have the can high and can low wires 
and there are the yellow and white wires and they're going to come down. So let's just follow the yellow one and I go over to pin 21 and if I come up here and I find pin 21 I come over and I go into a breakout um, and this breakout is at the left passenger footwell so at least that's in the car that I know it came back in so we could check the signals here and we can see if it got into the car at that point here and then I notice that this yellow wire comes back out on 22 and 22 comes down here and this goes to another breakout. So they use a lot of breakouts on this car and this one says that it's under the front uh, passenger seat. So apparently we go to one breakout that's somewhere up on by the dash or the footwell and then we've got this one and it says it's under the seat and like all these cars you never know where these components are really located so we're going to just have to dig and find it but under the seat if it really is that will be an easier one for me to find than one under the the footwell or it's up in the dash but we have multiple connectors so what I want to do is I want to come down to this connector and I want to see if I've got a signal on the white and yellow and then we're going to need to check them to make sure that it went in and out of the connector like maybe I've got corrosion on that connector if we got water on it it would be all corroded and then it might not get to get out but usually the corrosion gives me capacitive curving in the waveform and I can see the waveform having a rounding edge at the top and I didn't see that so I don't know I need to get here and then we just need to do the test and see where we need to go and if we don't have a connect if we don't have any signals coming from those controllers inside here then I'm going to dig around up under the dash and I'm going to find that bridge and then we'll check that bridge to see if we've got comm lines there and if we still don't have comm there and we've got it out there so then I'd need to check the wiring harness to see if maybe where it went through the firewall or something it's broken there so let's go ahead and do the first test I want to find this connector that's under the seat it's the easiest thing for me to get to right now so let's go ahead and take care of that Okay, so I followed the wiring diagram to under the seat. And you know, this is why I just love to work on cars. Because you never know what you're going to find. You're not going to believe what's wrong with this car. Here's what's wrong with this vehicle. Do you see how someone just dike those wires, attack, split? I've never seen anything like this. I don't quite understand why was anyone would do that. But okay, that's the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and solder that connection back on and fix this. And we'll have this car ready to return to the customer. Okay, guys, I've soldered the connector back onto the car. I've got good uh, waveforms on the data stream. My dash is out, so I don't have any lights. The tack is functional and my scan tool is communicating with the vehicle. So this car is fully repaired and ready to return to the customer. If you guys are doing comm work, you're going to need scopes. You're not going to be able to do a lot of the comm work without being able to see what's happening on the wires. What are the, the data transmissions? What are the packets doing? What do they look like? If you use a scope with a logical analysis and you do a test and you understand what those results are and then that test drives your next test and you use quality equipment and you gotta use scopes guys if you don't use scopes it's just gonna be so hard to fix these modern cars if you just do a few things you too will have good troubleshooting in your base